I'm Brian Freer, you're doing high school physics. Today's topic, free body diagrams, pulleys, and friction. So here's your basic pulley problem. We have two masses, one of one kilogram, the other of half a kilogram, attached to each other by pulleys. And one of these masses is going to be pulling down, causing this thing to move, or maybe not. Maybe this thing is going to be completely stable, and this thing is just going to be held there. The question is, of course, what is the acceleration of the system? Is this going to be successful in pulling everything down, or not? So, four steps to solve a problem like this. First up, draw the forces on every single object in our system. So this is also going to create our free body diagram because that's just your object with all the forces drawn on. So let's start over here. First up, we have the force of gravity downwards, which I'm going to write as mg. So that's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. I'm using big M for this object because it has the greater mass. There's one more force on this, and that's going to be the pull of the rope. So while the force of gravity is going to pull our object downwards, the force of the rope is going to pull it upwards. Any force caused by a rope is known as the force of tension, or F sub t. Okay, so that's a free body diagram. For this one, we've drawn all the forces on that are acting on this object. Let's move on to our other object. There's only one force acting on here, and that's the force of tension. The rope is going to be pulling it this way. Okay, next up, we're going to assume a direction of acceleration. So as we, I mentioned before, the two ways this could go. Either this thing is going to be successful and the system is going to be pulled this way, or the um, opposite direction of acceleration is this way. So one of these two is going to be our overall acceleration, and we're going to have to pick one. We could be wrong, but that's okay. If we're wrong, we'll just have to do some things differently, or maybe we can just take the answer. So it doesn't matter which one we pick, so let's just pick one. I'm going to say we're going to go with this one. I'm going to assume that the system accelerates downwards, so I'm going to call this my positive direction. So everything that's pulling it downwards is going to be positive. Everything that's pulling it this way is going to be negative. So, for this particular object, our total force is equivalent to all things pulling it downward, which is just the acceleration due to gravity, minus all things pulling it upward, which is the force of tension. Over here, we have our total force is equivalent to, there's nothing that is pulling it this way, but the force of tension is pulling it this way, which is our positive direction. This is just going to be the force of tension. So let me actually bring these equations over here somewhere more manageable. Recall, of course, that force is equivalent to mass times acceleration. So for this equation, Mass times acceleration is equal to mass times gravity minus the force of tension. Now that I'm going to bring this over, I'm going to use little mass, little m for this one, for it because it's a smaller mass, equals the force of tension. Notice if we add these two equations together that the force of tension is going to disappear. So let's just do that so we can solve these a bit more easily. We get big M A plus little m A equals M G. Okay, so we're a lot closer to finding out the acceleration of the system. We can divide out the A from this side or factor it out rather, and we get acceleration times the sum of masses equals mass times gravity. So now let's actually start substituting in some numbers. We have the mass of one is one kilogram, mass the other is half a kilogram, equals the larger mass, 1.0 kilograms, times acceleration due to gravity, 10 meters per second squared, and that's positive because it's accelerating us in the positive direction. So we have on this side 1.5 kg equals 10 newtons. So divide both sides by 1.5, and we're going to get, this thing is going to be about 6.67 meters per second squared. So this is a positive answer. And so, that, so let's refer to our step 4. If it's positive, just accept the acceleration, so then this is the right answer. If it had been negative, now, then we would have accepted it, it would be accelerating in the opposite direction with that acceleration. That's because there is no friction in this particular setup. If it were negative and there were friction, then we would have to go back to step two and assume a new direction of acceleration. So this is actually throwing friction. So in order to do this, I'm just going to quickly throw in a constant. Mu equals 0.1. You're going to need mu for every single problem that involves friction. Typically, your problem will just give it to you. This is known as the coefficient of friction. So now let's actually get into friction and see how this is used. The force of friction, so F sub F, is defined as the normal force times mu. So whenever two objects are in contact, it's going to be something known as the normal force. The normal force is going to be the force that's completely perpendicular between those two objects. So let me show you over here. We have this object exerting a force downwards on the table. This force is completely perpendicular to the table. The force exerted is perpendicular. So this is going to be our normal force. And in this case, it's the mass times gravity. And it's going to be multiplied by mu to get our force of friction. We have our mu, so now we can actually throw in friction. Now, which way does the force of friction pull? Well, this depends on what you decide in number two, the direction of your acceleration. If we assume that 
the whole thing is accelerating this way, so this is our positive direction, the force of friction will accelerate in the opposite direction, because the force of friction always opposes motion. If for some reason we had decided this was the positive direction, the system was accelerating this way, which in this particular problem is impossible, but for other problems might not be, then the force of friction would have to pull the other way, still in the negative direction. So just one rule to remember about friction, it's always negative. So let's rewrite these equations with friction involved. So here we have, uh, we're going to still assume that this is the positive direction. Nothing is going to change here because there's no friction acting on this object. But over here, we have the force of tension pulling this way. We're assuming the whole thing is going to be pulled this way. So the force of friction has to act opposite to that motion. So it's going to go in the opposite direction. This is, this is going to become force equals force tension minus the force of friction. So let's pull these down here. This hasn't changed. Mass times acceleration equals mg minus the force of tension. Here, however, we have little mass times acceleration equals the force of tension minus the force of friction. Now, that's going to be equal to the normal force times mu. We decided the normal force was mass times gravity for this one. And it's going to be multiplied by mu, which we have up here. Now, now we can still add these together to get rid of the force of tension. So again, we're going to do that. And we're going to bring up the A again, just like we did last time. So we have acceleration times sum of masses going to big mg. The force of tension has been eliminated, but we're still left with minus mg mu. So now we can actually start substituting in some figures. We already worked out this is 1.5 kilograms. We've already worked out big mg is 10 newtons. Little mg mu, so we have a mass of 0.5 kilograms, acceleration to the gravity of 10 meters per second squared. This one doesn't really matter. Times a mu of 0.1. So we can work through all that. It's still going to be 1.5 kilograms. Nothing's changed here. Equals 10 newtons minus 0.5 newtons. So we subtract that. We get A times 1.5 kilograms equals 9.5 newtons. So we divide both sides by 1.5. And we're going to get approximately 5. And that's going to be meters per second squared. So you notice that our friction has actually decreased our acceleration, not by too much but certainly by a noticeable amount because it's a force applied opposing the direction of motion. All right, to recap. When you have objects that are going to be affected by forces, draw out a free body diagram, draw forces on all the objects. Pick one object, draw all the forces on it, move to the other object, draw all the forces on it. Next, assume some direction of acceleration. It doesn't matter which way, just assume that the system is going to accelerate in one direction and take that to be the positive direction. Everything going in the other direction is going to be negative. Then write equations and solve them. If you get a positive answer for the acceleration, you can just take that and move along. The system is moving in the direction you assumed with that acceleration. If it's negative, but you don't have a force of friction in the problem, then you can assume that the system is accelerating opposite to the direction that you predicted with that acceleration. However, if you get a negative acceleration, but you did have a force of friction, you're going to have to return to step two and assume the other direction of acceleration, rewrite your equations, and then solve again. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Creer. See you next time.